Today, I want to talk about our um, language arts curriculum and what we chose for our homeschool. Um, I have three kids, one who is in first grade going into second, and one who is going into pre-K, and then I have a two-year-old. So she doesn't do anything in language arts. But for the pre-K and for the second grader, I have chosen Logic of English Foundations. So I'm going to go over how we use it and a review of it, everything I like about it. Um, this curriculum is intensive phonics based, so instead of doing sight words, it will teach your child the phonics and the spelling rules behind everything so that they can basically read every word instead of just memorizing certain words. So that's kind of like the basis of the program, but it teaches everything. This is a full language arts curriculum, Logic of English. It will teach them. Um, reading, spelling, phonics, writing, grammar, and handwriting. Okay, all in one curriculum, which I like. I don't have to do a bunch of different ones and juggle them. Um, this is the book that I read first. This I read before I got this curriculum. And this is called Uncovering the Logic of English, a common sense approach to reading, spelling, and literacy. This book is very interesting to me because as someone who grew up in public school, I was taught that a lot of words just don't follow the rules and there are just so many exceptions and it gets confusing, but you just have to memorize it. But in here, I learned that there are actually, there's 74 basic phonograms. There are 31 spelling rules that this Logic of English Foundation teaches. And once you've learned those basic phonograms and the spelling rules, you those will explain 98% of the English words. So there's not as many exceptions as we thought. It's just that we were not taught all of the photograms and all of the spelling rules. We were taught like I before E except after C, but you know, we weren't taught all of the spelling rules. So really there's not that many exceptions, which is great. It makes um, learning the English language much more logical and much more easy to understand and follow. So this book i highly recommend even if you don't choose this curriculum this is a great book um, there's lots of curriculums out there now that teach intensive phonics versus just memorizing words so i really recommend that you read this book uncovering the logic of english and it is a short easy read and you will learn a lot yourself <laughs> which is great um for, for me reading has always been i just know how something's spelled and i don't know why you know, I just, I guess I've memorized it over the years. And now I know why. It's like, okay, this really actually makes sense. So get this book. It is by Denise I, uh, Ede. So get that. It's a great book. So this is the actual curriculum that I chose. Now, if you go onto the website, um, logicofenglish.com, you will see that they have a couple of different programs. Um, they have foundations and they have essentials. And I believe they have another one to check out but foundations on their website says it is for ages four to seven and essentials is for ages seven or eight and up all the way to adulthood anybody that is having trouble with reading or just needs some review so a logic uh, so foundations is for four to seven if your child is around the eight-year-old they might still could do foundations but essentials might be a little bit better for them because it's not quite as you know I don't want to say childish because my seven-year-old really likes this, but this is just, it's geared more towards younger children. Um, it starts out with A, and it goes in um, levels like A, B, C, D. So each level has 40 lessons and eight review lessons. So on the website, it says that a lot of people will do A and B for kindergarten, and then they will do level C and D for first grade. Of course, there are other ways that you can mix and match it. Um, on the website, it does say you can start A as young as four-year-old in pre-K, which is what we are doing with our son this coming up school year. He is going to be starting on level A. And this is the teacher's manual for A. Um, and then my daughter started level B because we didn't find this curriculum until she was already sort of past the A level. So she started level B at, I think, the end of kindergarten. And then we finished up B and did C in first grade. 
and then we're going to take pretty much all of second grade we'll see how it goes but my plan is to take all of second grade and do d because um in d they really learn kind of getting ahead but in d it's really reviewing everything and learning how to apply it so i think that'll be great to just spend a whole year just getting that really really great foundation and making sure she knows it um of course you know like their website says you can do it however you want you don't have to do a b kindergarten c d first grade you can stretch it out to second grade like we did or you can start it in pre-k like we're doing with our son just whatever works for your child um that's why it's done in a b c d and not it's not done by grade level obviously so just you can go on their website and you can take placement tests see where your kid should start at um, a lot of times they do recommend just starting at A and you can just skip through whatever you don't know just so that you get the way that they teach. We did start with B for my daughter and it was fine. So it worked out. I did have to kind of reteach some of the things that um, we learned. Like A starts out teaching each individual letter phonogram, so single letter phonograms, A all the way to Z. That's basically the entire um, entirety of A is teaching the single letter phonograms A through Z. And then in B, let's see what does B go over, I forgot. B does um, short sentences, teaches them to read short sentences, long vowels, and schwa sounds, which I never knew what that was until I started teaching wing charts, but it is like your lazy vowel sounds. And um, what else does she teach? Multi-letter phonograms. So then it'll start going into phonograms that are two and three and even four letters. And then in C, they learn to read paragraphs. Um, they learn, start to learn new spelling rules, more phonograms, and they can read multi-syllable words in C. And that's where we have gotten through. We are done with C. And then in D, they do master all the basic phonograms. So by D, Actually, by C, they have already learned all 74 of the basic phonograms, and then in D, they master those basic phonograms, and they are introduced to a couple of the advanced phonograms in D. And um, they're going to deepen their spelling skills by learning, I don't know if they learn new spelling rules in D, or if they just keep um, mastering the ones that they've already learned. And then by D, they should be able to read pretty much any children's book because at that point they've learned how to decipher and decode 98% of the English language. And so at that point your child should be, the website says about a second grade reading level, which is great because we're doing the second grade, so that'll put it right on target. But more than that, they should be able to just pretty much pick up any children's book that they want and they can read it. Now, one of the things that I worried about after completing maybe B, or maybe it was halfway through C, I was doing some of the online testing, reading tests for my daughter, and as far as speed goes, she's probably a little bit below her peers because she doesn't know as many sight words, so she does have to sound out a lot of words, even though she's actually gotten to where, without doing sight words, she still knows a lot of words like that and doesn't have to sound them out because she's just read them so many times. But she still has to sound out a good bit, so she's not super fast with reading. But then I did a couple of um, tests online. I don't know what you call them, but a couple of things that I found online where you tested when they would read words in blocks. And if they missed three words in a row, then you stop there and whatever grade level you box were in, that's what you know their reading level is. And she made it all the way to fifth grade with that because she can read pretty much any word now. Now that we're done with C, I mean, it might take her a little bit longer, but she can read very complex, very long words. So she is at a fifth grade reading level, according to that. Now, I know none of that matters, but I'm just saying she can read long words. She can decipher pretty much any word, and she can read pretty much any book. It just takes her a while. And so now she's just at the point where D I'm excited for because she's just gonna master all of those phonograms and just make sure that she has them all down and has that really, really, really good foundation for reading. So that all she has to do from here on out in the rest of her school is just master everything and get quicker at it and just, you know, learn it. So that's great. I'm excited for her. And um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, oh, Logic of English is fun because it has a really great variety of activities within each lesson. So this 
curriculum will work for an auditory, aud excuse me, auditory learner, a visual learner, and a kinesthetic learner because there's lots of hands-on fun games. Sometimes they will do like a, a phonogram basketball toss where you have to read the phonogram and then you ball it up and you toss it into the basketball holder or goal. And in, in the workbook, sometimes there's little game boards that you take out and you move little pieces around as you get the phonograms right or whatever you're studying at the moment. Um, it's just really fun. And they give lots of suggestions for things you do. We don't always do every single activity, but I usually try to do most of them because they're really fun. And of course, they reinforce all of the concepts learned. So I want to go over just how we do it, how long it takes so that you kind of know going into this if you decided to pick this curriculum. Um, with A, you're looking at about 30 minutes per lesson. So 30 minutes per lesson and there's only 48 lessons in each book. B is probably going to be more around the 45 minute. Okay, the lessons are getting a little bit more in depth. There's more to it. There's more added into it. It takes a little bit longer. C, I would say we usually took about an hour for C. And I have read on their website that D is about an hour and a half, 90 minutes. So that, if that kind of helps you plan how many lessons you want to do a week or how many, um, if you want to stretch a lesson over two days, like an A, if you're starting in pre-K, you may do a lesson every two days. Because for us, for pre-K, language arts, we're probably only going to spend about 15 minutes a day. So since there's only 48 lessons in here, and I do not plan on going to B until He's completely ready, so we'll probably take at least two days on every one of these, and we'll probably only do school for him three or four days a week. So you know, it'll stretch out a good little, a good little bit for us. Um, but if you were in kindergarten and doing A, you might want to do the whole 30 minutes, and you might only want to still do three or four lessons a week. And then for B, like I said, it'll take about 45 minutes, and again, it's only 48 lessons 40 lessons and eight review lessons so you could definitely it's definitely doable to do a and b in one year or c and d in one year or like we did you can do b and c in first grade and then do d in second grade so for second grade since d they do say online i haven't done a lesson in d yet but they do say that it takes about 90 minutes we and there's only 48 lessons and i I kind of want to stretch it out for the whole year because I just want to really make sure she has a great foundation. So what we will probably do is we'll probably do two lessons a week and then I will probably stretch out, either stretch out those lessons for the rest of the week or just add in extra practice and extra reading. So that's how we're going to do it. Just do whatever works for your family. But this, I like that the, um, I don't feel super stressed to get it done because even if you do two of these in a year, you still don't have to do one lesson per day to equal up to your 180 days. So you still have some leeway for extra time catching up. So that's great. Um, let's see. All right, I'm just gonna show you some of the cool stuff that's in it now. So the teacher's manual, let's start with that. So this is A, we'll just start with, we'll go through A because it is the most simple. The teacher's manual will have in here your scope and sequence, of course, and it'll tell you what lesson, the phonemic awareness, handwriting, and spelling, if there is any. In A, there's not going to be a whole lot. It starts about halfway through with some spelling words. Now, let me just stop one second and talk about their spelling words. The spelling list that they have here, they will come almost every lesson, especially once you get into B. And it's not a list of words that you need to memorize and then take a test on. It's just, here's a list of words. You call it out to the student and you kind of give them clues um, about like what you've been learning, the phonograms and the spelling rules. And it's just a great way to practice applying it. So it's not a spelling test. It's not memorize these words and then test on it. Okay, so that's the scope and sequence. Then, of course, each one will give you some tips and things like that. Okay, this one has a list of the phonograms that are going to learn in this one, which as you can see are A to Z. It says the, the phonogram and then the sounds that it makes and then it gives you examples. So for A, A makes three sounds. It makes A, A, and A. So it'll say M, A, so you can know how to pronounce it. And then it'll say T, ABLE for A, and then for A, F, A, THER. Okay. 
So it gives you examples so you know how to um, pronounce each one. Okay, then there's a list of materials needed for each lesson. So if you just needed to quickly look and you didn't want to flip to where you're at in the book, you could say lesson one, okay, I'm going to need my whiteboard, tactile cards, and that's it. And then it'll say optional materials. This one has a mirror, Dr. Seuss book, a table, and a statue with a vase. So that's just, like I said, they give you examples of extra activities and ways that you can just make it a little more hands-on, a little more fun. And of course that's optional, but you know, if you have this stuff around, it's really simple. It's not like elaborate <laughs> that you need to plan for ahead of time. All right, these books do have the Common Core standards listed, but they are not Common Core aligned. So of course it meets and exceeds all Common Core standards for the grade levels that it's associated with which I guess is important to some people. <laughs> okay, so then we have the lessons. So it starts lesson one. So it'll list your objectives, the materials that you need, and then it goes into the lesson. So the first lesson is on phonemic awareness, and it tells you exactly what to say and exactly what to do. And over here, it will give you some teacher tips, and like this says, multi-sensory fun. So this gives you an extra thing you can do. Have students look in a mirror while forming the sounds. This can be picture particularly helpful for students with weak auditory skills. So it just gives you extra things you can do. And then it'll go into another. Okay, now we're doing compound words and it'll say 1.1 compound words. Now whenever you see that, that means that's the workbook. So then I have my son's stuff in here. So then you would go to the workbook and you would open it up to 1.1, which should be the very first one. So we have lesson one, 1.1 compound words. You would open it up to that and do the lesson that's associated with this workbook page. Then the next thing in here says 1.2, learn the lines. So then you'll go to 1.2. He's already started on some of this because he got excited when it came in the mouth. But um, this was just teaching them about where your top line is, your mid line, and your base line. And I actually made this R as an example of one that was too big and one that's too small. And he did these two. They were just right. <laughs> All right. And then it has a game that you play called Buzz the Teacher. And then it does some handwriting where you're learning just the swing stroke here. So you can pick which line. It'll always give different size lines. Some children do better on bigger, some do better on smaller. And you will just practice making the swing stroke. And that's it. That's pretty much it for lesson one. Like I said, A is not very long. And I will put all that together in here, and then when their time comes, I'll pull it out. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about A before I move on. With A, there are a lot of different options that you can get with the kit. Um, there's some things that you kind of have to have, but I chose to make them on my own or buy them on my own. So the only thing that I actually bought for A was the teacher workbook, the student workbook, and this book called Doodling Dragons, which is an ABC book of sounds. I just thought it was a cute book. I mean, you could get a book like this somewhere else, but this has all the sounds that you're actually learning in the curriculum, so it's nice. So for A, it'll say A, 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 and then it gives examples of A words, like apple, ant, and then examples of A words, like sniff eggs, and ate, and grapes, and then Examples of off words like wash and walls. And it just goes through every single phonogram that you're going to learn this year, or this in this in A, in this level. So I got that. And then the other things that you need are a whiteboard. So instead of buying it with their kit, I got one at the Dollar Tree. All my kids have one of these. I get them one every year, anyways, even before we were doing this. So that I didn't need. And then you'll need phonogram flashcards, which I have already made for my daughter, and I have them in here by letter. So for A, I have, just for example, the phonogram A-Y, which makes the sound A, and then there's the example word play. So I have phonogram flashcards. I made myself. You can buy them online, save yourself a little bit of time. Um, you'll need phonogram game cards, which I have already made as well. You can buy those with the, with the program to save yourself some time. And then these are what I use for my letter tiles. I just made some new ones because the other ones were getting messed up. So see if you buy them, they probably wouldn't get messed up as easy. But um, I got cardstock to make them on this time instead of just regular printer paper. 
and I've just got to cut them. And they go all the way from the ones that my son is learning this year to like the ones that my daughter is learning. So that's all the phonograms. And then for my daughter's level, she uses, she needs grammar cards as well. So I've made those for her. So in her level, she'll be doing grammar, more grammar this year in D. My son won't need that. And then I made this, this is just a little extra game that didn't go, didn't, doesn't come with it, but I made this for my daughter for summer and I think we'll continue to use it. But she likes to play memory games, you know, where you flip each of the cards over and then you try to make a match. So what I've done is I've made two cards for each phonogram, one with the phonogram and then one with the sounds that it makes. And so she'll put them over on the table and then try and flip them over and make a match. So that's just a game to help reinforce um, the phonograms that she's learning. That's pretty much all you need. I think there's a couple of other, um, they do have handwriting. They're like reason for handwriting and tactile cards and all that. I didn't use that with my daughter and her handwriting is great. And my son already has a really good grip and he can already write his name really well and his handwriting is pretty good already. So I didn't get that for him either. I'm just gonna do the handwriting um, stuff that's in here. And I do have handwriting without tears if I need to incorporate it if he needs extra help but each time he does this and then he also they also both have journals that this isn't part of the curriculum but I just like them to have some writing each day so like in his journal he just does right now we just practice handwriting really writing his name and stuff like that and sometimes he will tell me sentences and I'll write them for him so this is everything that he needs. It's just the whiteboard, the teacher's manual, the student workbook, his journal, and his Doodling Dragons book. And the whiteboard I got at the Dollar Tree and the journal I got at Oxmax. That's it. And then my daughter, who's doing D next year, she's on, she was just finished up C, so this was C still in here. Here's the D student workbook. But she's already done B, and that workbook is long gone. I threw it away. I kept a few little pages out of it that I wanted to keep. And B was really fun for her. B, as you can see, let me just show you an example of the lessons. They get a little more advanced than A. So, like, here's lesson 42. So, first we would do the phonogram TH, which says th and the, And then you go through that, just how to say it. You write it usually three times, circle the one that you like the best. Then it does phonogram practice, and there's um, a game that you play. This is a game. And then we do handwriting, writing uppercase T. And you can pick if you want to do manuscript or cursive. My daughter had already learned manuscript, so we started with that and B. And since we did her with manuscript, we did, I got manuscript for my son too, so that I wouldn't have to rebuy the B and C and D books that she's already doing. But if I had started her with uh, Logic of English and A, I probably would have done cursive, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so then you would do, so it shows you the cursive and the manuscript on here, but of course her workbook just has the manuscript in it. And then you have writing on paper and then matching phonograms, which is another game. Then you would do phonemic awareness, something about the ABC song. Seeing the ABC song as we point each of the phonograms. Then you have counting syllables. And then this is where the spelling list comes in. And basically it's just each word and it'll go over like this. We just learned a phonogram, the. So you would read it in a sentence, say it to spell it. And you can, this is where you kind of say it like it's supposed to be spelled. And then you sort of, it has its own markings that you'll learn as you go through. So you would reach, read each of the words and then you help them to spell it and apply what they've learned. And then you do reading, which this one is fluency practice. So it's gonna be a, a this one, you always do these as a game too, which is fun. Like it says, cut out the words, put them in a pile face down, set a timer for two minutes, and then draw a word, read it out loud. For each word you read co correctly, place a block on the tower. So you're creating like a block tower. And stuff like that just makes it so much more fun. My daughters always love doing that sort of thing. Instead of just here, let's read through all these flashcards. And then you'll do, um, sorry, that's the same thing. Some, um, some of these have like, this one says classroom, high frequency word brace. So it's, if you're doing it for a child, like in a homeschool setting or versus classroom, there's some different directions there. But that's it for B. Okay. 
And then, like I said, she's do, she just did C. So she had, for C, it would have looked something like this. She would have her whiteboard, which she has to have, the teacher's manual, and I always just put a little sticky note where I was at, her workbook, and then her journal. And all of those little card sets that I showed you, like mainly we would use this, which is just the phonogram, phonogram flashcards. And then she would do her journal every day and she would just write whatever she wanted to. I didn't have a specific amount that she had to write or sometimes she drew pictures, sometimes she didn't, but she would just do a journal. And I like to have the journal because I just like to be able to see how they progress. So I don't put any pressure on them with the journal. If they want me to give them a topic to write about, I'll help them think of something. But for the most part, I like them to just write about whatever they want. And it's, I just like to keep it fun and light and easy. Okay, and then for C, let me see if I can show, I want to show you some of this cool stuff that's in the workbook because the workbooks are really fun, but we've torn out a lot of the pages. So here's an example. So for learning phonograms, instead of just doing flashcards, again, you'll play a game and this is phonogram bingo. And that's in here a lot. Um, then this was where she had to learn, this is about compound words. She would cut out the two words and then paste them together. This, she would read the word, highlight each of the parts of the compound word, and then put it over. This was compound words again. This was a phonogram tic-tac-toe, which tic-tac-toe happens to be one of her favorite games, so she gets excited when those pop up in the book. More phonograms. And then this would be a sentence that I would read out loud, and then she would have to write it. Let's see. So just lots of really fun activities in here. And then in the back of each of these books, they do have readers that you will read each time. Let me see if there's one still left in here. No, there's not. Of course not. We read them all. Okay, let me go to our new, this is our new D student workbook that we haven't started yet. So I know there will be readers in the back of here. So as I flip through, you can just, let me just show you. I just love that the pages are so colorful and fun and there's just activities and it's, it's not the same thing over and over again and it's not boring and it's not just tons of stuff that you have to repeat. Okay. Well, like here's a thing on editing. All right, well, it doesn't look like there's readers at the back of this book. So for A, B, and C, there's a bunch of readers at the back of the book, but in this one, there's not. So maybe we're not doing readers. I know that this did say that it was, you start to read more like children's literature that is more well known. So maybe we're actually reading books instead of tearing out readers. But it does have one back there called Mole's Vacation. So I guess I would tear this out. Then you would staple it. Okay, the other ones have lots of readers and you go through each lesson you do a reader and you'll read it usually I don't know, about four or five lessons, you'll read the same reader over and over again. You'll answer comprehension questions about it. You'll have writing about it. You'll do different activities with the reader. All right, I've probably talked about this way too much, so I'm gonna stop there and just say that, get this curriculum, you know, check it out and give it a shot because it's really fun and it's also just a great way to teach reading. And it's a full language arts curriculum. So you don't have to piece together a handwriting curriculum with a reading curriculum, with a spelling curriculum, with a grammar curriculum. It's just all in one. And when you're done with A, B, C, and D, you can move on to Essentials, which is also by Logic of English, or of course, choose something different. But Essentials will basically teach the same concepts, but it focuses more on mastering everything and applying it and using it for more advanced reading and just moving on. Like I said, Essentials goes all the way up to an adult that you can learn from it. So, um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's see if I had any other notes that I just had to tell you before I stop. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it. When your kid is done, if they go through A all the way through D, they will know how to read 98% of English words, which is great. The other ones that 
are exceptions, you know, you'll learn eventually that those are more things that you do have to memorize, but it's a, such a small amount. It's not what we originally thought, which was most words just don't fit the rules, but they do. There's just more rules. <laughs> and I have learned a lot from this. My daughter has as well. It's really fun. And I just, you know, check it out. The website has some great ideas and um, thoughts about everything. It has research that they've went through and all that. So go to the website. It is www.logicofenglish.com or you can go on Amazon just to get the student workbooks and the teacher's manuals. Um, the website, of course, will have them and you can get them individually like I did or you can get the full kits. I, I don't know that I recommend getting the full kits or not because it is cheaper, but at the same time, it takes a little bit. It took me, like I spent one day before school started just making all the cards. So it doesn't take that much time, but you know, it takes a couple of hours to do everything. But anyways, I hope you enjoy it and um, let me know if you have any more questions about it. Bye.